everybody. Um, today we're going to continue the uh, energy balance for reactive systems that we discussed last time. Um, and actually, uh, uh, I recommend that if you want to watch this video that you want uh, that you watch the previous one because uh, it highly depends on what we discussed last time and the steps and everything discussed before. So if you don't, uh, if you didn't watch it, please do before you go ahead and watch this one. Um, so actually what we're gonna do today is just uh, application for what we uh, just uh, discussed last time so here we have the reaction of ethyl benzene dehydrogenation to styrene so this is the reaction we have it's uh, C6H5 CH2 CH3 and what happens you just uh, get one uh, hydrogen um, uh, molecule out of this uh, 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 compound so you break this bond uh, or, or you add one bond you just uh, take one hydrogen from here and on here then you form this uh, styrene monomer um, and um, it's a uh, highly endothermic reaction uh, that's why the reaction happens at uh, 600 degrees Celsius and in in, in this uh, video we are gonna see how we are gonna calculate the heat of reaction at the reference temperature and then the um, uh, heat of reaction at the reaction temperature which is 600 Celsius not the 25 degrees Celsius and then we will see if we have a reactor that uh, has this reaction inside how we're gonna uh, do the energy balance over the whole reactor after calculating the heat of reaction. So the first step we're going to do is to um, calculate the heat of uh, reaction from the heat of formation. So actually, I got the heat of formation just to save some time from the, from uh, Colson, the, like the same way we did last time. And we have here the heat of formation of ethyl benzene, styrene, and hydrogen. Um, and as we see, hydrogen is zero because we we said last time it's an element, so you don't need any energy to form this molecule uh, or this um, uh, element. So um, the heat of reaction, as we said last time, it's gonna be the um, heat of formation of products minus the heat of formation of reactant. So the product is hydrogen, but make sure that you multiply this by the stoichiometric coefficient. So um, I know it's it's not gonna make a difference, but uh, just to keep in mind that this is one. Uh, plus styrene uh, or one multiplied by the styrene and um, this is the products minus the heat of reaction of uh, reactants which is one multiplied by the ethyl bandine. Um so this is the heat of reaction that we got and actually just to keep that in mind the heat of reaction that we get um, uh, from the heat of formation has the units of kilojoule per mole it's not joule per mole like the cp uh, or the enthalpy that we calculate from the same reference so just to be consistent i i prefer to uh, convert this into joules per mole so that you can easily um, uh, have the same homogeneous uh, uh, units without uh, any confusion so just multiply this by thousand and then you are good to go so this is the heat of reaction uh, at the reference temperature uh, in joules per mole okay so um, the reaction as we said it happens at 600 celsius because it's an endothermic reaction and it needs heat to go forward um, so this is the temperature this is the reference temperature and here comes the uh, longest step um, in the heat of reaction calculation is how to calculate the heat of reaction at the reaction temperature not the reference temperature so what last time we said that you need to um, since you cannot go directly this way you know you need to go that long path to go from heat to cool the heat the reactants from the reaction temperature which is 600 to 25 celsius and then calculate the heat of reaction um, at the reference temperature which we, we already uh, calculated and then to heat the products from the re reference temperature to the reaction temperature and actually I, I, I arranged this um, uh, uh, file this way or spreadsheet this way just to make it easier for me maybe if you have any other way that makes uh, you more comfortable it's it's fine but this is just to make it uh, organized and you see who, which is which so here I put the CPs of the reactant which is the only one reactant is the ethyl bandine um, and um, what we're gonna do is to, to do the CPDT um, the integration of CPDT from the re reaction temperature to reference temperature so actually it's gonna be the same uh, way we calculated the enthalpy last time um, but just uh, you're flipping the uh, limits of integration so before we started from T reference to the uh, whatever temperature but here we start from the temperature that uh, is the target temperature to the reference temperature so um, let's see what this uh, reaction gonna look like so I just uh, I already wrote the reaction just to 
to save time because um, we still have some other stuff to do and no one to waste more time so here we have a multiplied by t so here we have the reference temperature minus the uh, the reaction temperature because as we said just flipping everything and then b over 2 multiplied by t square minus or t reference square minus t c over 3 plus d over 4 everything is the same and here um, so here you just calculated the uh, the first part so now we have the first part and second part and if you have like one two three whatever thing uh, just do the same add them together and then uh, you're done with this part of the reaction of the uh, uh, of the equation so um, we have only one component so they said the summation of the CP dt this is only one and then the summation is going to be the same because you have only one component and now we have the first part the second part is already calculated here which is this number and then the third part is um, the opposite to do the same for the products so for the products um, I did the same as well uh, let's see what we have here. So it's the same equation. You have a multiplied by t minus t reference. It's now the opposite of what we did here. It's t minus t reference b over 2 t squared minus t reference squared. The same, the same, the same. And then the summation would be this plus this. This is the total. And keep in mind, if you have any any one component that has stoichiometric coefficient more than one, you have to multiply it by uh, this stoichiometric coefficient because it's sigma multiplied by CPDD. Uh, okay, so now we have almost everything. Now the final step is to uh, add the three parts. So the first part is this, the second part is this, and the third part is this. And here we have the heat of reaction at 600 Tesla. So I'll, I'll change the view from this uh, uh, scientific to general for one reason. So the number we have now is 125,025. Um, the value that in joules per mole, of course, and the value that people uh, published in papers and it's available in literature is uh, 124 and 900, which is um, almost the same number, just uh, 125 uh, uh, joules per mole difference. Um, and actually, in our case, it's close because it's uh, an ideal system. It, uh, it occurs at, uh, uh, I think, 6... Uh, 0.6 atmosphere which is less than uh, or like low low temperature and the components are ideal so um, the value that you get from the calculations is really close to the value uh, that's actually uh, going on or the, the, the calculated value um, sometimes it's not the case if the system is not ideal as we discussed before but um, just to show that if, if it's an ideal system then you're good to go if you have this um, uh, calculations okay so the second uh, part of this video is to calculate the heat of reaction uh, or use this heat of reaction in the energy balance calculation over a reactor. So let's go to the second sheet. So actually you have uh, this uh, 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 reaction happening in a reactor uh, at 600 Celsius. And you have, um, uh, let's put let's any value, 100 moles per second. Uh, in this in this part, we'll just assume it's 100% um, reaction, which is not the actual case, but just to um, uh, make it easy for us to understand how to do the energy balance. And then the next part, we will see uh, what if we have lower conversion. Um, so uh, we we'll assume 100% conversion. And um, we need to have all the givens before we go ahead and do this. So uh, the heat of reaction, we have just already uh, calculated this. Uh, so we need to copy the value that we got from the fir first part and put it here. But there is one one e like very nice thing about Excel that if you have a value in one sheet, like the, the this sheet which is named heat of reaction, and you need to use it here, uh, it's easy to just uh, press equal and then go to the first sheet and then uh, choose this cell and then press enter so actually what's going on now is that it's um, using the value that you got in the uh, first sheet in this sh second sheet and then actually what you see here is heat of reaction with the sheet name and then f22 which is the cell number so uh, if, if any change happens to the first uh, sheet then it will already show up here so don't need to worry about this um, okay, so actually we said we have 100 moles per second uh, flow rate and then this is the entropy We just calculated it the same way we did before so I'm not gonna waste my time working on this now And then the total entropy is gonna be this multiplied by this and the summation would be this so Nothing new. It's just calculating the entropy of the stream. We did this uh, many times before um, 
and the rate of reaction would be the same uh, uh, like what we did in material balance before it's going to be the same number of moles because it's 100 percent conversion so it's going to be the same value here and since you have uh, 100 moles uh, entering the reaction then you will have 100 of uh, styrene and 100 of hydrogen so it will be 100 and hydrogen and 100 the enthalpy calculated the same way here from the uh, oh I, I missed one point um, I don't know the temperature of the product and this is actually the goal of this part of the uh, problem that you need to calculate the exit temperature or the product temperature if you have 100% um, conversion so in order to do, do this we when we did that before uh, you need to um, uh, assume any temperature so I'll assume like maybe 300 any temperature is then um, uh, 600 and I'll say that this is assumed just to keep that in mind and these two values are calculated based on these two temperatures uh, the reference temperature and the assumed temperature and then this will be the um, multiplication of both this is the total enthalpy and then the total enthalpy of the product is this plus this um, we need uh, to calculate the heat of reaction I mean the the uh, the um, uh, the temperature assuming or based on the energy balance equation which states that the enthalpy of products minus reactants equals to R plus delta HR the summation of I mean negative R delta HR we have no Q so you don't have any uh, heat input or output from the system so it's gonna be like the same uh, air heater problem that we solved before so we need the term of R delta HR and since we have only one reaction so we have only one R delta HR so uh, the final step is just to uh, calculate this uh, this uh, equation. So it's a summation of enthalpy of products minus reactants um, plus summation of R delta HR. And of course, it's based on the assumed value of this temperature, so it's not um, gonna be right. So the way we do this is to go to data and what if analysis goal seek. I want this to be zero by changing the temperature. You can use solver, of course, but goal seek is uh, is good. Um, and here it does everything and all the calculations are done and here the temperature you find that it's 53.34 almost Celsius uh, because the reaction is very very endothermic uh, very high uh, heat of reaction or yeah, heat of reaction by by endothermic reaction so um, this is everything in, in the 100% uh, conversion but actually in the actual life it never happens in this endothermic way uh, as the, the reaction goes on the temperature decreases so the rate of reaction decreases and then it reaches a temperature that the temper the, the heat is there is not enough to uh, push the reaction forward anymore so it just stops at um, whatever conversion I think it's 60% so what we are gonna do is to um, do the same so it's uh, the third sheet and um, we're gonna do the same uh, thing uh, but assuming that it's 60% conversion and because we have 60% conversion so not all the uh, styrene that uh, entered the reaction is consumed that's why you will have I mean ethyl benzene so we'll have some ethyl benzene coming in the product um, beside hydrogen and styrene so uh, for the feed it's not making any difference you have 100 moles and then this is gonna be the same enthalpy of the feed the product the, the enthalpy doesn't or the conversion doesn't affect the feed by any means um, and we have 60% conversion so the rate of reaction would be this multiplied by 60% uh, which means that 60% of the feed is reacting and then the R delta HR is gonna be uh, the multiplication by, of these two the same thing I'll, I'm gonna assume uh, any temperature and let's make a comment that it is assumed and then for the products, um, the enthalpies are calculated from the assumed value and from the reference temperature. And uh, in this case, the product would be uh, 60 moles per second of styrene, 60 moles per second of hydrogen, and then 40 moles per second of uh, ethyl benzene because uh, uh, these are the unreacted uh, uh, styrene uh, in ethyl benzene. So we are going to do the total enthalpy of everything and this is the total enthalpy of the product um, and the same thing we're gonna do the goal seek and see what um, uh, product temperature would be so I'll I want this to be zero by changing this temperature and then yep here it goes 
So this is almost everything now for today. Um, we, we saw how we do the energy balance uh, calculate or the heat of reaction at uh, any temperature and then the energy balance of reactor with 100% conversion and then this 60% um, conversion. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks. Bye-bye.